fellers, welcome to our website again. I've been getting some requests over the last few years uh, on what's involved in restoring an Auto 5. I've done literally thousands of them. And uh, these poor old guns can be a lot of work. Uh, they sometimes come in pretty rough. Back in years past, they were just shooters and beaters, and that's what guys did with them. Now they turn into a little bit of a collector's item, so guys are trying to restore them, get them back like new. So that's what we do. Anyway, I got in this rough little 20-gauge A5 the other day. Um, one of those little guns that's just been used long and hard. Been, uh, as they say, rode hard and put up wet. Uh, the wood's pretty rough on it. A uh, lot of use. Checkering's worn flat. Stock, uh, same thing, pretty rough. A lot of scuffs and dings. Checkering's flat. Uh, usually they got some cracks in them that need repair. This one, this one for some reason doesn't have any cracks, which is kind of unusual. A lot of times those forms will crack down at the, the base where they come into contact with the receiver. But anyway, this one just needs a good recut and a refinish, and we're going to do this done in a semi-gloss finish, not that real high deep gloss that we do on some of the newer models. But the uh, receiver is pretty rough on it. It's got a lot of pitting in it. It's, uh, it's got that brown patina look to it. Gold, of course, is worn off the trigger. And uh, we're going to uh, dismantle this gun and uh, go into the polishing process and uh, show you what's involved in the restoration of one of these old guns. We have to be careful on this one. Uh, it's got some lettering on the barrel. They all do. But this lettering is very light, and it has the matting on the rib. They call this a matte rib. I call that a plain barrel, but Browning's always called that a matte rib. It's a plain barrel with this matting on it. So we've got to work around all this matting and save that and this light lettering. But uh, we're going to salvage all that and save it and uh, make this little gun look like new. So uh, we'll get it uh, torn down here in the next phase. And at that time, we'll inspect it and look for worn and broken parts. And then at that time, we'll begin our polish work on it. All right, the next phase of, uh, uh, in our rebluing process on this little Auto 5 20 gauge is uh, the disassembly of it. And at that time, I uh, start my inspection process kind of looking for worn or broken parts. And uh, one place I look, I look at first is uh, I check the, uh, the rail on the uh, locking block. Uh, these early models, that's what we call a narrow rail, have a tendency to break off. Uh, this one's still good. However, I noticed as I was breaking it down, left-hand extractor is broken off. So as I uh, reassemble this gun, I'll make a note of that and slip in a good uh, new extractor. So anyway, during the uh, disassembly process is when we do a lot of our inspection for worn parts. Didn't really see much in this gun. It's got a lot of uh, badly burred screws, and um, lock screws especially, that I might have to replace. We'll polish them the best we can, but if we can't clean up the burrs, uh, we'll replace those screws so it looks bright. And then we're going to go from here over to the glass bead machine. We're going to sandblast uh, this rust off so we can kind of get an idea of what kind of pitting we have in the metal. And all that pitting has to be polished out. It all has to be removed. So we'll head for the sandblaster from here. All right, I stepped over to my trusty sandblaster here, the old machine I've had for about 30 years, and I use the heck out of this thing. Now I'm going to switch it on. I got my uh, receiver uh, in the machine, and I'm going to get my gloves on, and I'm going to commence to uh, bead blast some of this rust off. Here's a bad spot right here, and uh, we're going to see what we've got here. This will this will get the rust off and clean it up. And, then we can see how deep the pitting is. And this one doesn't look too bad. It's going to take a little work to clean it up, but uh, uh, we'll uh, get it blasted off, and we'll bring it over and take a closer look at it. All right, I've just come back from my trusty sandblaster over there, and I've uh, bead blasted this receiver off. I've uh, knocked off all the rust that was on it and blasted out the engraving. Now, when I say blast, I'm not talking about a, a coarse sand that takes engraving out. It, really has no effect, uh, effect on engraving at all. It does blast the rust out. It's a number 13 bead. It's fine as flour. But it will blast the uh, rust off of it and get it up out of the engraving uh, so we can uh, see what we're up against. And anyway, this gun is not a real bad one. It's got a lot of frosting type of a pitting in through here. And uh, that all has to be removed. It, bluing doesn't hide anything. Bluing uh, is actually an oxidizing process. When we put this in the tank, we'll show you later. But... The way this goes into the tank is the way it's going to come out. I could throw this, this receiver in the bluing tank right now, and it would come out with a color, kind of a dull, frosty uh, black. 
which a lot of guys uh, use on what we call that's a stalker finish or a matte finish, matte blue. So um, the all the uh, the salts do is turn it black. So we're going to polish this one, and make it look like factory, and uh, we'll go into our polishing process next. Now that we can see what we're up against since we beaded the uh, rust off of it. All right, I've been back over to my sandblaster again, and I've been blasting on this barrel, be blasting the uh, lettering out. I wanted to kind of get that uh, rust out of it so we could just see how bad it was. And I be blasted out the matting that's on top of the rib. We want to get that rust out of there before we start polishing on it. And then we're going to commence our polishing operation. I have my receiver in the vise and ready to polish. I'm going to start with a rough grid of paper, like a 120. This is a piece of cork. It's a rubberized cork. Excellent for a backing on polishing because we like to hand polish all we do here. And uh, we're going to commence to polish on this receiver and start uh, getting that pitting out. And uh, after we've uh, commenced to work on this for a while, we'll bring it over and kind of show you the uh, final uh, product. And we'll uh, be uh, moving right along with that in just a little bit. All right. We buffed this, uh, this receiver on the, uh, our Tampico brush wheel here. And it's giving this receiver a nice satiny sheen. Let me wipe off some of the compound and we can kind of see what uh, kind of a finish we end up with here. It's going to be a nice soft satiny sheen. Now what I'm trying to do is get this thing totally ready to throw in the bluing tank because you got to remember on bluing, all those tanks do down there is turn it black. The, uh, the uh, type of polish that you put on the metal is going to, that's the way it's going to look when it comes right out of that tank. There again, if I wanted to buff this on a rag wheel, make it as shiny as a mirror, that's the way it would look. But we want this to look factory, and this has a nice satiny sheen to it now. And uh, when that comes out of the tank, it's going to look just like it does now, except it's going to be black. But it's not going to hide anything. It's not going to cover up anything. Uh, it won't highlight or bring out engraving or smother engraving. It's just it'll be black, and uh, it, it will have a, a factory type of finish, and uh, no one will ever know the gun's been blued. So we'll proceed from here down to the... Uh, bluing room and uh, get this uh, receiver in a tank and all right today we're in the salt bluing room uh, well actually we do it all here we rust blue and we salt blue we do a little bit of everything in here bluing is just a dirty nasty uh, job it's, it's just it's dirty filthy we keep it in a separate uh, room all by itself away away from the rest of the shop because we have a lot of caustic materials cooking here we've got uh, oh we've got all sorts of tanks here uh, we've got a tank over here that's kind of got a degreaser in it. Uh, this is just a hot water tank for boiling out. This is another degreaser tank here. We have several because we do so much at one time. We run mass production on these things as we're, we're blueing. This is a degreaser tank here. This is just a cold water rinse tank. Then the real business end of it is right over here. This is a salt tank. This is where we blue guns that have uh, old receivers, uh, guns that have silver soldered barrels we can blue in this tank. Uh, we can't do salt solder barrel in that tank because the, the salts attack the uh, solder and, uh, and then your ribs come off your barrel. So we get uh, hot water glue those. We'll go through that here later. Tank back in the far back is a silver solder blacker tank. It'll blacken the silver solder uh, that's uh, along the ribs of a lot of the uh, uh, modern guns. Have in here right now a uh, browning A5 barrel that I've been cooking back there for a while. And uh, it had a streak of silver solder along the ribs. And uh, I have now blackened that silver solder. It just makes them look more professional and better if you don't have that streak on. So uh, I rinsed it in the cold water tank. Now I'm going to cook it in the hot water tank here for a while to kind of boil those salts out of it. But uh, this is where we're going to be gluing our automatic 5 receiver that we've been polishing on. And uh, it's going to be going into tanks here shortly. Uh, salts are rolling at about 290 degrees and uh, up to a good temperature right now. We have in here... Uh, uh, we blew a lot of items, uh, small parts, in baskets. And here's some baskets I'm rinsing off right now that have just come out of the salt tank. has small parts in there. And uh, we're going to hang those in the hot water here shortly to uh, uh, boil those out. Here's some baby 25 parts. We're going to put those in the hot water. The hot water just boils the salts out of the nooks and crannies and, and the, uh, the screw holes and that sort of thing. And we don't leave them in there too long, oh, four or five minutes, something like that. And, uh, but as we go along here, we uh, have to keep this tank kind of cooled down. Uh, we're kind of getting up to the temperature here where we've got to drop, drop it a little bit. Then we're going to be gluing some uh, SKD barrels here that uh, have a special solder on them. We can salt glue those. 
Uh, we resolder ribs on them with a special solder, and we, we believe in the salts, and this, this solder is not attacked. So anyway, this is the business end of the salt blowing room. It's just a, kind of a, a dirty, uh, nasty job when it comes to blowing. Around behind here, we've got some finished barrels hanging on the rack. Uh, we just uh, some SKB SKB barrels we just pulled out. Uh, we've dipped them in a uh, water displacing oil and hang them. We hang them up here, and then they're kind of dripping back in the pan here. So these barrels are ready to clean up. We got to polish the bores and all the bright areas now. And, um, get those so they look factory. That's the whole idea is to try to make everything look factory. So anyway, we're coming right along. Here's a uh, here's my uh, A5 barrel. It's uh, cooked long enough in there and uh, now we're going to dip it in the displacing oil, water displacing, and just hang it up to uh, drip out and there's uh, there's a finished product. So that's our barrel off our A5 and our uh, receiver's getting ready to go in shortly. And uh, that gun will be coming right along and my next phase will be polishing the small parts to it and assembling gold plating the trigger. And uh, we'll be going through that next uh, as soon as we get done here today. Well, we're still in the process of blowing this automatic five we started on the other day. and um, We're down here blowing today. This room's kind of steaming off because it's about five degrees outside. And so all my tanks make it look pretty uh, steamy. It's not always like this. I've kind of turned my vent fan off a little bit too so you can hear me. Uh, I've been cooking this uh, a5 uh, receiver and barrel back in this degreaser tank we talked about the other day. The same tank I degrease in when I do a rust loop. But uh, we're salt bluing today. And uh, I've been cooking this uh, receiver in here for about 15, 20 minutes. What this tank does, it's a degreaser tank. It cooks the buffing compound and the sludge and junk out of the screw holes. So what I'm going to do is pull it out now. And we uh, take it out. And I've got, you'll see how I kind of got this in. This is the uh, magazine tube sticking up out of here out of the uh, degreaser tank. That's kind of a handle for me. We're not going to worry about bluing that because we're going to polish it all off right again anyway after it's been blued. So to me that's just a handle. I take it out of that uh, tank and I put it in a cold water tank here. And I take a Tampico bristle brush and I kind of just brush over it a little bit. And that's to make sure I get all the uh, buffing compound and, and uh, crud out of the screw holes. And there it is. It's all buffed and polished and uh, uh, I've touched up a little engraving work on this one. And uh, we're going to put it over in the salt tank. Right here behind me is our salt tank. And uh, there again, I'm going to put this, kind of lean this in the tank, immerse it in the bluing salt, which is just sodium hydroxide. And uh, there again, the uh, magazine tube sticking up out of the, the salts, and uh, that doesn't really hurt a thing because that's got to all, all be polished off right again uh, after we blew it. <coughs> Excuse me, after we blew it. So, um, we're going to leave it in there for about 15 or 20 minutes and uh, uh, these salts are new. We just changed them out here just yesterday so uh, they'll blue pretty quick. And uh, when I take that out uh, you'll see that that receiver will be blackened up nicely and then we'll commence to clean it up and assemble that gun. But uh, that's the basic idea behind bluing. Uh, we've got a barrel in here kind of hanging on a, uh, a hanger here. Uh, down at this end of the bluing tank we've got some baskets of small parts. And uh, uh, we put the small parts down from one end, but uh, that's about all this tank does. They call it a bluing tank. It's actually a blackening tank. It just blackens. And they call it express bluing because it's fast. It's not, a, it's not this slow rust bluing like they used to do. We're trying to make a little profit with this business, so we try to uh, make things go a little faster. So we'll be pulling out in just a minute. You'll see if that receiver will be nice and black, and then we're going to get into the assembly part.